You know, one of the things that would help is that you'd ask my dad to be quiet. <laughs> now, he's got his mouth full, so I can't blame it on him this time. <laughs> well, um, I'm just so thankful to have you all here, and I, want, I just wanted to just thank you guys, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Since my cousins were late, I'm going to remind them that they, they missed the story at the beginning. Yeah, I wanted to hear it. It was my uncle, Don Dempsey, who brought the funeral to the Grand. And uh, our family then started coming over to the Grand. How old were you girls? Five and four or five. They were four or five years old. And so I, uh, I fell in love with the Grand. Uh, coming over from the west side, the wet side, <coughs> and uh, I enjoyed it because it was warmer and it was drier most of the time. And when I come over and visit in the winter times, we'd have some snow. And uh, you really look forward to snow on the west side because it didn't happen very often. So. Uh, I'm telling you the rest of this story because they didn't hear it. So you, you heard, well, I guess there's a few good yes here. So. Um, so that was, I was about 11. And uh, through the years, one day I was riding with my parents in the back seat of their uh, station wagon. I was 15. And uh, I was on the Banfield Freeway. Those of you who are in Portland. And I remember this very vividly. I said, uh, when I grew up, which happened to be only seven years later, I'm going to move to Legrand, have my own business, and have an airplane. And uh, all of those things happened. And uh, I guess if my uncle had never moved here, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So thank you for all being a part of the. Uh, our 50-some years here in the Grand. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. Love you. Thank you. So I, uh, I wanted to share a little of the reception about this impact on my life. Um, for one, I knew some of you weren't going to be able to be at the service, so I didn't want it to just be a meal without it being about Linda. And for two, um, there's some things I'd just like to share from my heart. Linda and Dennis opened Nature's Pantry 38 years ago on July 1, 1986. This, by the way, my name is Blake Bars. Um, I, uh, got brought in. I was blessed to have Dennis and Linda bring me into their business and teach me the business and then my wife and I, Misty, have bought me business recently from them. Um, but the store opened, was founded and started by Dennis and Linda in 1986. This was after they had sold a much more lucrative nursing home business. You see, in the nursing home business, Linda had been witnessing the poor quality of life that poor health choices led to. She had developed a passion for leading people to vibrant health naturally, in large part because of a book she read called The Ministry of Healing. Eventually she decided it would be more beneficial to help people earlier in their lives. After some thought and much prayer, Linda and Dennis decided they were willing to sell the nursing home business. But they wanted to be sure it was God's will. So they told God that they would sell if he would send them a buyer. Not long later, a hospital administrator from the west side, I think he was from the Dallas, came inquiring if they were interested in selling. After some conversations and an agreement that the new owners, corporate owners, would not fire long-standing employees in order to hire younger, cheaper workers, a deal was made and Nature's Pantry was born. It started as a tiny little lighting shop, and in those early years, they didn't take much income, if any. Slowly over time, I think it, actually, I think in those years, Dennis actually did some uh, paramedic work where he was in an ambulance and would um, 
Dennis, is that right? You were a paramedic? You were in the 70s, that was in the 70s. So, he supported the family somehow. Uh, later years when this business was going because it certainly wasn't supported in the family. Um, and slowly over time they added grocery items and produce items and the rest is history. Interestingly, Linda did not inherit great genes or health habits from her family and she had not been raised in a way that put much importance on her relationship with God. But because of the most, uh, but because of important influences in her life, like her grandfather, Linda began to learn how important our choices and habits are for our health, and that our health was not just physical, but also spiritual. Linda developed a love for God, a love for people, and a passion for teaching natural health principles that can improve our whole lives, body, mind, and soul. Linda's life verse was 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Linda was not perfect, and those of us who knew her well knew her course. But she had a desire to share the love of her perfect Heavenly Father with those whom her life touched. Many of us in this room knew this about her and were so blessed to have had her attention as she gave us instruction for our health, listened to our struggles, and counseled us with wisdom. Linda could be blunt, but almost always had a loving countenance countenance and an occasional wry smile. She had a way of telling it to us straight, whether we were a little overweight or just making bad choices. <laughs> I was so glad you I was so glad you shared that because it's so good. But she did it somehow she could do it while making us feel loved and not judged. I haven't been to nature's pantry since I was a kid. I used to go in there all the time with my mom to get blue sky soda and fruit leathers. It smelled kind of funny in there. There was some funny people that were really amazing and special. In a good way. And there was something unique about that place. Even as a little kid, I knew it. But when I had gone back, I was living wild, and I was, I needed to get clean for a UA, which is a drug test, for those of you who don't know, the acronym. So I went to Nature's Pantry to get some Sunny 7, which some friends of mine told me really worked. <laughs> On my way to the checkout, I went to stop me. She says, oh, hello, Blake, how are you? Because she'd known me since a baby, since I was in the same church as her my whole life. And she, she said, how are you, Blake? She smiled and put her hand on my shoulder and said, I can see you're taking good care of yourself. I knew she knew. But you know, even though I knew she didn't approve of my lifestyle, I still felt loved and cared for. Years later, I was doing odd jobs for Dennis in, for my dad, who had his Affleck office in Dennis's building. This building used to be a Chinese restaurant. I think it was Fong's. And, um, I was in the back doing some work, some odd jobs my dad had employed me to do. He probably didn't need me to do, but he was entertaining me, being a good dad and paying me some money to do, do things. And I was back there in this back room that hadn't been remodeled or anything, and there was still, it was just, it wasn't great. There was grease all over the walls and from the old Chinese restaurant like 30, 40 years ago. And Dennis comes in and he looks at me and then he looks around and he looks back at me and he goes, the only place to go from here is up. <laughs> Little did he know years later he'd be hiring me to learn his business. When I started at Nature's Pantry, one of the first things Linda had me do was clean the shelves in the entire store. It took me three months. 
And during that process, I learned so much about health and health products. Looking back at it now, it really reminds me of the movie The Karate Kid, when Mr. Miyagi makes Daniel sand his deck, fix his fence, work on his car, and Daniel thought these were medial tasks, but later realized, he realized the magnitude of, of what he had gained while performing these chores. My first few years at Nature's Pantry, I didn't care too much about health, but I had just earned my MBA and I was still, and I was all about business. I had visions of making Nature's Pantry a chain of stores. I was all about perfecting the business systems and the business model so it could be duplicated in more locations. Linda saw my passion and drive, but all the while she was praying, dear Lord, help him to care about health someday. <laughs> Because to Linda, Nature's Pantry was always so much more than just a business. Over the first several years, as I learned more and more about natural health and applied it to my life, I started to really become interested. I learned how important stomach acid is for digesting your food and absorbing your nutrients. And through changes to my diet and lifestyle, I was able to get off heartburn medication and with digestive enzymes as well. And I heard countless testimonies from Linda, from customers, from other team members. And I also learned how to boost my immune system, to put myself in a strong immune stance with diet and lifestyle, and how to beat cold with vitamins and herbs. A little while later, I read a book called Small Giants. And it's about companies who chose to be great instead of big. And I started to see the value in staying put, developing strong relationships, and serving one community rather than trying to spread myself and my company over multiple locations. And so as Linda had done, I decided to choose principle over profit. A few years ago, I completed a faith-based leadership class with my friend Braden. The whole purpose of this class was to write your life's mission statement. And in this, the course of this project, I learned that my life verse was the same as Linda's life verse. And my life's mission was to continue her life mission. I'll be honest, in my drinking and logging days, I used to tell people I smelled like hams, beer, and wood chips. I would have fell over dead if you had told me I was going to trade the shafts for an apron and smell like granola and garlic the rest of my life. <laughs> Ask Misty. She said, I had another thing in there. She said, no, you need to put garlic in there because that's what you really smell like. <laughs> but the way it came about, I was accepting of it. And actually, I was very excited. In AA, we have a saying that life has a way of beating us into a state of reasonableness. And I guess you could say I had been through enough at this point in my life that I was reasonable enough. I guess sometimes God brings us a teacher when we are ready to learn a lesson. For me, Linda was one of those teachers. She taught me the natural principles of health and healing. She modeled to me how to love and serve well. She showed me the character of our loving Heavenly Father, and she inspired me to follow in her footsteps. My life is founded on what she built, and I'm forever grateful to her for it. When it came to diet and healthy habits, Linda always told us not to focus on getting rid of all the bad things in the world because we'd get overwhelmed and give up. She said, focus on adding in one good thing at a time, and then slowly, little by little, over time, the bad stuff will get crowded out. One of my favorite things that I like to share that Linda taught me was her wholeness acronym. And Linda had a presentation she was going to give to a ladies group at the university, and she was praying and asking God what she should share. And um, God gave her this acronym, Wholeness, and you have it actually in, was given to you in your programs, and also it's on the programs on your tables, um, and it looks like this, it's an insert in those, but, so you have these, we also have these in the store, you can always come and get one, um, there's an interview I did with Linda on our website that has this on there too, um, But, and I don't want to go through all of it with you, but it's there. And 
So I went ahead and prayed and she got this acronym wholeness. And the W is for water, the H is for healthy habits, the O is for outside air, the L is for love, the E is for exercise and elimination. Linda always wanted you to keep moving and keep things moving. You know what I mean? If any of you counseled her on health, she may have asked you about your how things were moving. N is for nutrition, E for endorphins, S for sunshine, and S for sleep. You know, these, these basic health principles are things we all know, but we don't all put into practice. Furthermore, we have come to forget or just disbelieve the importance and power of these principles. In our world today, we like fast food and quick fixes. We tend to overlook the basics of health and go right to the high-tech facility or latest drug or surgical procedure that costs thousands and requires high-end insurance. We focus on treating just the physical symptoms and we often don't look for the underlying causes. Linda was not opposed to medical advancement, but she believed in treating the whole person, body, mind, and soul. She would agree with Plato, who said, you ought not attempt to heal the body without treating also the soul. Linda would remind us that ultimately our healing doesn't come from human hands, but that God is the healer of our souls. And in regards to holistic health, she taught us that some of the most powerful healing mechanisms that God has given us are free. Things like deep breathing, sunshine, fresh air, water, sleep, exercise, stretching, herbs, plants, time in nature, self-control, fasting, solitude, social interaction, human touch, hugs, smiles, forgiveness, positive thinking, gratitude, prayer, generosity, charity, faith, hope, love, and the gift of salvation, to name a few. And while these simple and powerful health principles are free, it does take effort and discipline on our part to reap the fruit of their practice. Isn't it ironic that we are in an era where we are having in an era where we are having to relearn basic human health skills like breathing, walking, sleeping, loving, drinking clean water, and eating real food? I've heard it said that hope is two things. The will to live and the way to live. The will to live without the way to live is just a wish. Friends, Linda was in the business of hope. She reminded us of what it is to be human. She taught us how to live. Linda would want us to learn how to live by these principles so that we could reach the full potential, the full human potential and purpose that God made us for. She would want us to live in, pre in the present and love and serve well, but she would not want us to focus so much on our temporary bodies that we lose sight of things with eternal value. Linda would tell us that in this broken world, even a life with, lived well is cut short. Yes, our health choices will very much affect our quality of life and how well we can execute our purpose. But in the end, even when we eat right, exercise, and answer the call God puts on our lives, we're still going to face death. Friends, this is why we need Jesus. There is no diet, there is no exercise, there is no medical advancement, there is no cure for sin and death. Nothing from our own hands or our own works or our own strength can save us, only Jesus. Amen. The gift of salvation cannot be earned, it can only be accepted, for it is by grace, through faith, we are saved. And it is because God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to provide the way for us so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Beloved, our life here is temporary, and although we get a glimpse of God's beauty and the way things were meant to be through people like Linda, all too often we're reminded that the beauty in this broken place is not without pain, and this life is quickly fading, just a vapor, here today and gone tomorrow. In the book of Revelation, God promises a hope and a future where he will be with his people and he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death, nor mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things will have passed away and he will make everything new. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
My father's house has many rooms. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. If you don't know it yet, Jesus will prepare a room for you too. He is knocking at the door of our hearts. We must only invite him in. Friends, in closing, I pray, as Linda prayed, that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Thank you. I just want to touch on something that Pastor Dale said in the, uh, the service over there. He said, Linda, and I witnessed this, focused on forgiveness, and came up and through this valley, spoke to several people about that and how important that was to her. I think that leads well into the song that we're going to sing, Goodness of God. I can, I can hear Linda really in her heart singing this song um, because God is good. And you can't see forgiveness unless you see God is good. Or when you see forgiveness, you see God is good. He's merciful. He's gracious. And God has been good to their family through the years. And, and uh, so this song, I feel, would fit, fit well. Blake suggested it, Goodness of God. It's a wonderful song. And God has led this family. The story that Dennis brought up, the decisions you made to move to LeGrand, now that changed the whole course of, of so many things. And so this song kind of brings up all through my life, God has been faithful. And that's the case for them. And Dennis, and all their family. And the reason why she uh, gave us the, the book with the, the songs in it and the hymns, that uh, was because we led music at the Seventh Day Adventist Church for about 30 years. So um, we were blessed to be able to do that. And uh, you know this song, uh, The Goodness of God, if you do, please join us. We don't want to just sing it by ourselves. It's a hard one to just sing and listen to anyway.
thank you here in this moment for Linda. We thank you for the opportunity to have come together for the chance to think about her life, the impact and the effect and the legacy that she has left, the lessons that we can learn from her, the amazing uh, principles and um, passion that she had. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to reflect on our moment now, on the present, to understand the grief that we may be feeling, to know that we move forward in this season um, without her presence among us. But we also thank you that we get to reflect further on a future. That as we look at the past, as we understand the present, we reflect on the future that Linda was confident is hers that the <clears throat> disease and um, pain and everything else that she was afflicted with at the end is over and when she comes up out of that grave, she will be whole and remade and renewed. She will stand with all the strength and more that she ever had and she will look up into the skies and she will see her savior coming in the clouds to praise him in his presence forevermore. And we praise you, Lord, tonight for that. Lord God, I pray that you would let this time of the past, the present, and the future as we reflect on the amazing person that Linda was, that it would allow us to reflect on what really is important to make good decisions so that we can live the best life that you've called us to live in the present, but to also commit ourselves to you so that there comes a day for each of us when we can be reunited with our Savior. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to share the way that we love Linda and the way she loved us. And I pray that you be with the family as they move forward into this next season. Walk with them, comfort them, and love them well. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.